Um, welcome, and we're, we're going to be talking about uh, video conferencing and streaming. It is just an insight. It is a complex subject. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of money involved in it. Uh, but this is just really um, some quick insight into what actually is possible with uh, video conferencing and, and streaming. So uh, there's myself. I'm a technical instructor, uh, sorry, infrastructure advisor, as um, Steve says, and we're joined with uh, Phyllis Callanan from uh, Janet and she'll tell us more about the facilities offered by uh, Janet uh, and video conferencing. Just a quick poll to sort of get um, you, you sort of started and interactive. Um, using your, your tick box, can you say um, who is actually using video of some sort in the office, please? So um, you should see a tick just above the, uh, the pane where we've got the list of names. OK. Right. So most are coming in. Okay, we're just waiting for the result. I think most are in there now. Thanks very much, Steve. We've got a nice result. Um, so uh, 13 of you, just over uh, somebody, there's about eight or, or so that haven't actually, sorry, four or so that haven't responded, um, four that say no, but 13 are definitely using video in the office. Um, next quick question for you then, who's actually using video in the classroom? Okay, I'll just clear the answers on there. So if you can vote, please. The answers are coming in nicely. Thank you. Okay, I think we're more or less all there. Okay, so a bit more even this time. Uh, seven using it in the classroom, seven no, um, and no responses uh, from eight of you just yet. So, okay, uh, and finally, Okay, who's using video of some sort at home? Okay, so same thing. Okay, so uh, I think there's a, a bit more of a, a sort of swing towards actually using video at home of some sort or another. So it sort of comes as no surprise, really. Um, so, you know, it, it's just quite interesting, actually, it's sort of becoming a little bit more pervasive into our sort of everyday lives. Uh, just a quick couple of uh, facts for you. Um, um, many of you, I'm sure, will remember the, uh, the Olympics from uh, last year and who might have been watching it and who might have been watching it at work, of course. <coughs> um, but anyway, the, the London Olympics was the biggest streaming event of the year. Right, and just to give you a scale of it, there's 24 high definition streams coming out from the Olympics, uh, and it sort of resulted in hundreds of millions of views. Um, BBC iPlayer, which some of you may well be users of, um, that's actually getting requests for 200 million uh, requests per month, and that's quite enough, um, you know, to sort of make you realise that in fact being able to repeat and uh, review. Um, programs, you know, is important for, for many people. Um, and as of the 11th of June, a quick poll on YouTube, um, size Gangnam Style has got 1.6 billion views. Just think of that, billion views. So, you know, video is all important to what we're actually doing on a day-by-day -day basis. So, all right, what you'll find is that um, certainly in the home, um, over the next few years that certainly it's happening now that the traditional set-top boxes, which were really not very interactive, they couldn't record, all those sort of things, they're actually going. And we're actually replacing them um, with multi-room and multi-device setups. So, um, you know, things like Apple TV, for instance, um, you can actually connect those to your computer and your TV audio system and actually view uh, video and audio uh, in multiple rooms. So some could be in the bedroom. Um, I was talking to Steve earlier, and he was saying about his daughter just takes up his iPad, uh, sorry, her iPad, up to the bedroom and watches films from there. 
Um, and that sort of brings home the point about actually video being used on multiple devices as well. Uh, as Steve says, um, she does occasionally, uh, he does occasionally see um, a daughter coming down, probably for something to eat maybe. Um, so streaming media, where is it actually coming from? Um, we've got it coming from various sort of sources, from uh, Netflix, Love Film, if you want to actually um, subscribe to those, iTunes, uh, Apple TV, I, I mentioned, also coming from Amazon. Right, so there's lots of different places where things are actually uh, coming from uh, today to actually view the different types of media. So what we're seeing now is very much a seamless integration of um, video that's coming you know, live on the television, but also on demand as well through BBC iPlayer, 4OD, um, Sky Now, and I think that's coming out soon, Sky Go. Um, interesting that there are, um, if you looked at Wikipedia, there's 193 video on demand um, channels actually listed on there. So there should be something to appeal to um, all sorts of tastes. Uh, and of course, not just in English, but in, in multiple sort of languages as well. So video is very much all pervasive and coming in. Um, so what's happening is we're now becoming really multitasking consumers of media, actually using it for entertainment, um, for enrichment of information and knowledge uh, and business uh, and also, of course, for, for learning. Um, just going back to that uh, bit about the, um, the, sorry, the information, uh, the enrichment of information and knowledge, um, I'm, I'm just interested to note that, you know, when things come on the TV now, certainly um, I've got my iPad perhaps uh, alongside me on my phone and I actually think, oh, I wonder who that is. I actually do a search on the web. So I'm actually trying to get much more information from that initial hit of, of media that might have, um, you know, I might have seen. But, right, what we're seeing now is people are very much more in control of when and how they actually consume their media and on what devices they want to do it on as well. So. Um, and, of course, we're seeing it, as we are with many things with technology now, we're seeing it much more with our current generation of students. Um, it is just whilst um, I'm seeing a few uh, bits and pieces coming up in the chat, it, it's worth just keeping your eye on the chat as well as listening to me, um, you know, just to see what sort of things uh, are mentioned in there. Feel free to contribute something if you, if you wish to. I'll sort of mention it as we, as we sort of go along. So what I'm essentially saying is we really must be using video much more in what we do in the workplace um, and in the classroom as well. So um, just touching a bit more on what I was sort of hinting at, uh, a quick poll again. Um, how many of you actually sit with your smartphone, your tablet, um, your laptop whilst you're watching the TV and video and do things like browse the web, check emails, Facebook and, and so on? Okay, so a quick vote, yes or no. Okay, responses are coming in. And sort of, what a surprise. Um, you know, that it is certainly a popular pastime um, to, to actually do that. Um, it does obviously ask a few questions about things like, um, you know, Where's that separation, perhaps, when we talk about checking emails, the separation between work and, um, you know, sort of getting on with the rest of your life. Um, you know, so, you know, all those sort of things are, are points to be considered as we become much more consumers every day, more or less every minute, you could almost say, of, of different types of media. So, um, with the video streaming bit, I've sort of hinted at um, stuff already um, on that and where it might be seen. Video streaming for many, I'm sure, is actually new and there's a lot of terminology associated with it. I've, I've put a link uh, there listed on the, um, on the page, uh, but you know, what we'll actually do is put that list, uh, sorry, that, um, that link available for you um, after along with many other. Uh, and you know, the link has also been popped into the in the chat pane, if if you wanted to sort of click on it now. Um, so you know that's the beauty of using things like Collaborate. So you can in fact um, multitask. Oh, funny that. Um, so you can actually listen and you can actually go off and view 
uh, and and do many other sort of things. But the video streaming bit, I'm going to come back to a little bit later. I just want to sort of spend a little bit of time on the um, video conference inside. Um, so a, a few sort of reasons to video conference. Um, I noticed that quite a few of you said you actually use it in the office um, on the on the previous poll, and that's good to see. Um, so no doubt some of you may well be using things like Skype uh, and, and other sort of meeting tools to actually hold meetings, perhaps to work remotely, work from home, um, or it could be across, you know, abroad on a trip. Um, we wish, of course. Um, but it could also be used as we sort of move out of the office to actually start to shrink um, your office space. And of course, one of the main things, and certainly I'm very keen on that, is actually the um, you know the possibilities to actually being a bit more green, um, to reduce pollution, uh, but importantly for us as busy, uh, busy people, actually reduce the time for travelling. Um, uh, and so on. So, you know, we, we can be a, a little bit more productive. Um, but importantly, from a teaching and learning point of view, it certainly should be considered quite strongly for sort of conducting training and, and classes online. Um, it also gives you the ability to actually uh, connect in with um, some experts, and those experts could be anywhere in, in the world. And um, you know that that is really an important consideration of to how to actually enrich your teaching sessions um, for your students. And it allows you to collaborate with others uh, and other organisations, and also uh, with students. We actually see it quite a bit actually in the primary and secondary sectors that there is collaboration between different classes of students in different countries as well. But we don't tend to see too much of that, I don't think, going on in, in the UK. I'd certainly be interested in knowing if there were um, some particular examples. Um, so you know, do get in touch if you've got something going on in your particular organization that you'd like us to know about, and sort of show and tell and, and chat about it. Um, and then, of course, with video and audio, you can actually record the sessions um, to reuse them time and time again. Um, so, you know, on the video conferencing uh, bit, you know, sort of, um, how big do you want to go? Um, but actually, more to the point, probably, how much money have you got? You could go for a telepresence system. This is actually used in some universities, um, and as you see in an example here, in 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 businesses. Um, and if you look um, on the graphic there, you can see that there's actually three big TV screens um, sort of simulating people actually being um, sort of there in the meeting. Um, you can have those scattered around a, a desk like they have done there, or it could be on a wall, three or four of those big screens. The unfortunate thing is a system like they've got there is probably in the region of about £20,000, usually talking about £4,000 per screen. Um, for you know, which includes all the hardware uh, and everything behind the scenes to to sort of make it work. So for many of us, I'm sure that telepresence may not be uh, a possibility. So what we tend to concentrate on are the more cheaper options, shall we say? Um, and those could be on the desktop or the mobile. And of course, we'd bring your own device uh, as well, very much to the forefront in what we're doing now. So there'll be many that you'll uh, know there already. Skype. Uh, FaceTime, if you're a, uh, an I Apple iPhone user, uh, Google Hangouts, that's uh, just recently started, uh, and just underneath that um, graphic there for Google Hangouts, it's actually going to get better for mobile devices um, as 4G is uh, just around the corner, which will give us much better bandwidth for, for collaborating with um, mobile devices. Um, as a one that I came across uh, the other day, it tends to be uh, a lot more social, but you can see you know you can actually collaborate, you can chat with sort of twelve people at one time. It tends to be probably uh, a younger audience um, rather than a uh, a sort of business audience, but there's no reason of course why you shouldn't be able to do it um, the uh, The thing is you can have twelve of those um, people in on it uh, for free, so uvu. Is, is a possibility. Um, the bit more professional approach right, is to use something like we're using at the moment, um, which is Black, Blackboard Collaborate. And what we're actually tending to see um, across the sector 
is most people are sort of using um, either Microsoft Link Online, Citrix GoToMeeting, uh, that's another popular one. This is Blackboard Calibrate that we're using. Uh, Adobe Connect is, is pretty good. Uh, I know that art and design tend to like um, the Adobe products and, and so we'll use um, the Adobe Connect product. Um, and if you want to pay for a bit more money, um, you can go for Skype Premium. Um, we're actually going to include in there uh, a sort of link um, so you can actually go off and compare all these different online conferencing tools. Uh, and as I was saying, all these links were made available um, after as well. So going a bit back to um, streaming, um, this could be where you're actually um, creating your own content or actually um, using content from, from somewhere else. Um, so it's been used in-house, um, but I think some people need to really consider um, you know, how people can actually use it, how organizations can use it to generate extra income. I was in a work-based learning provider um, the other day, quite specialist in what they actually provide, and they were certainly considering producing videos um, of uh, sessions and students working and tutorials, providing it all by video, uh, and actually selling it to the market. Um, obviously at, at good rates, but sufficient to be able to um, move into an area that could give them um, another income stream. What do you do with the video, for instance, once you've stored it? Well, you could put it on your VLE, um, on your Moodle or your, um, your uh, Blackboard um, system. So you, know, so you could share it then with your, uh, your students. Or you may well have your own video server system, which would be the preferred option, to be honest. Um, and there are options like um, ClickView, um, which I do know that um, many FE colleges certainly use, but there is a subscription uh, base to it. But having a server type system um, with something like ClickView um, allows you to serve your, your video well over, over your network. Um, or you could take it out into the cloud. Um, so uh, a lot of uh, people generating their own video um, and actually then put it out onto YouTube. Um, there are some organizations creating their own YouTube channels, um, and you can do the same sort of thing with Vimeo as well. Or if you want the much more expensive option, um, you could be going towards the uh, Brightcove as a, an online video provider. Um, I was saying about creating uh, an income stream. If you really want to see uh, the power of how this could be used to actually serve audience, to sell courses, um, and see how live streaming really works well. One of the best examples I've seen is one at creativelive.com. Uh, they do photography, they do business, software design, video, lifestyle, lots of different types of courses. They do. Um, they run a, a sort of webinar for uh, one day, two days, three days. Um, and uh, on the repeating, uh, they actually repeat on subsequent days as well. So you're not always having to uh, buy and subscribe. You can actually view it for free uh, at the time. But if you want to buy it later, um, then it costs you something in the region of about $99, um, you know, which equates to about 60, 70 pound. Uh, but it's still a good, useful sort of resource. So, you know, there is a need for actually generating perhaps. Uh, video for, for people's consume in some way. So if you are interested in doing your video streaming, um, consider where about it needs to be displayed. So we're moving definitely to a, a mobile sort of market. Um, so you need to make sure it's compatible with devices that are much more mobile, things like your Apple, um, maybe Flash, uh, media streaming, uh, and, and so on. Consider. Um, how many video and audio inputs you need, uh, and how many cameras uh, will that give you for actually multiple um, camera switching in, in a room, uh, and how many streams do you want to deliver at a time. If I think of Creative Live, they can often be putting out about four or five streams at the same time on different subjects. Um, you start getting into hardware and software encoders, uh, which will convert the video that's been recorded. Uh, and put it out into a format that's compatible um, with what you're trying to drive, usually out on the web. Um, and you need to consider what sort of sizes um, of the video that you're producing. The more size there is, the more bandwidth you're going to need. 
Um, so there is a cost implication for that. Um, some of the best live stream uh, providers uh, at the moment are Livestream and Ustream, uh, but consider also Bamboozer. We used Bamboozer last year to stream our EFA, uh, and that proved to be uh, quite popular. So able, people were able to view live what was actually happening at our, at our EFA. So Bamboozer, um, it's, it's reasonably cheap by comparison. If you were to do subscription on it, you're talking about $79 per month, um, something like that. So let's say about £50 a month, £600 a year. Um, so it's a bit of an investment. Um, there are other options which will give you much more sophisticated facilities. Um, and as someone's already pointed out, um, it's free up to a point. But the nice thing is you can actually stream video even from your, from your iPhones or webcams. So you know, there's, there's quite a few options there to sort of explore if you wish. Um, if you want to go really sophisticated but quite compact, um, this is a nice camera-based system. Stick it on your camera, connect to your wireless system, uh, and then stream it out live straight from the camera um, out. So it's quite a nice um, option. I couldn't find a price from that. Uh, oh yeah, funny that, um, you know, but uh, as with all of these um, sort of streaming providers, as it, with most software houses, you've got to sort of enter into negotiation with them to, to decide on a, on a price, price point. A couple of points just mentioned there by Ginny on uh, privacy concerns, yes. Um, I think, you know, with most things with video and with photos, there has to be the consent of the people involved in it. Um, I know that enrolments um, at some organisations, um, you know, do include things like disclaimers or, you know, the fact that the, the students are, are happy to be recorded for, um, you know, the purposes of whatever the college may deem uh, appropriate, and of course that would include video. Uh, Google Glass coming along, yes, uh, that's definitely a privacy concern um, from all the hype that's going on in the, in the media on that. So yeah, uh, Google Glass um, you know, is, is a camera system af after all. So there's some things to consider um, with the sort of uh, conferencing and the uh, video streaming. Um, I'm hoping now that we've got Phyllis to actually come in and tell you a little bit more about the services that um, you know, uh, Janet can provide. So um, I'll hand over to uh, Janet. Thanks, Gordon. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. My name is Phyllis Callan and I'm the Network Services Coordinator at Janet. I look after various bits and pieces, things like um, the content provider list and um, I also get involved with um, issuing licenses, recording licenses um, to use the Janet service. Um, various, you know, various queries that come in the uh, VTEL service. So um, I'll just give you a quick overview of um, the Janet video conferencing service itself. Um, Janet has been supporting video conferencing since 1995 and doing that for UK education and research community. Um, one of the things people may or may not know about is the live support which is offered. Um, this is provided by a team of people at Edinburgh University. And on a Monday to Friday, that's done between 8 o'clock and 9 in the evening. And on Saturdays, that's from 8 in the morning until 5 in, in the afternoon. And a lot of people find that's quite helpful because sometimes conferences are out of hours and it's useful to know that you've got um, an operator on the end of the phone, a person that you can actually speak to and he'll help with, um, you know, to assist with your live conference. Um, one of the things with the Janet video conferencing service is that it's secure and it's a web-based system and it allows you to book or launch um, a conference with anybody anywhere. Um, if you have um, participants that are non, um, you know, if they don't have room systems or they don't have, um, they ju they've just got a webcam or something like that, webcam and, and PC, then you can invite them as guests. Um, the service is feature rich in that um, and continually being enhanced. Um, when I say feature rich, I mean that it allows you to arrange 
um, choose a layout for your number of participants or you know how what way you want them to appear on the screen during your conference or whether you want um, your conference to be um, the uh, if you want the focus to be on on the person who's speaking at a particular time then that's something can be done and um, you can record a conference um, you can stream it out to a crowd as well if you wish um, we're frequently asked why would I want to use Janet video conferencing and not something else um, one of the things is that um, it the Janet system removes the need to use complex remote controls in rooms um, system dials out to the remote sites so that the users just answer an incoming call. For those users that don't have a room system and instead were joining say, on a desktop system, those users will be given a link and then they just need to um, either click on that link or enter it into um, the system depending on which type of desktop user they are and they can join then. Um, live telephone support means a lot to people and um, it can be quite um, a, con a quite, um, confidence making I think if you, if you know that um, should anything go wrong either at the start of your conference or even during your conference that there are people at the end of the telephone and you, can just, you just give them your reference number and um, they'll try to join in your other participants. Um, the support team can access diagnostics um, to each site, so that, that helps them to quickly see what the problem is. Um, it's a, we've got a web interface that allows users to simplify making calls, so that's the, the booking system really. And um, if you've never used a, a particular room, you, 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 it doesn't really matter. I mean, once the thing is switched on and somebody shows you what you need to do, then you just um, make the booking and turn up at the appointed time ensuring that the equipment is switched on and everything is ready to go then. One of the things I look after is the um, video, video um, technology advisory service and this is uh, one of our services that uh, is is a, for the people who know about it, they find it quite valuable. Um, in some cases, then people don't know about it and uh, w wish they had known about it sooner, particularly when it comes to um, buying equipment, um, because the, the team we've got are quite knowledgeable. And over the years, they've tested various room systems and are familiar with uh, desktop systems as well and can offer impartial advice. Uh, thereby saving people a, a whole lot of money really with you know uh, avoiding uh, purchasing an item that may or may, may or may not have been what was actually needed um, they also advise about room setups and and layouts and uh, uh, people cons uh, frequently um, ask about um, positioning of microphones or seating arrangements and things like that and what colours to um, have a room and they advise on that. Uh, they also do deal with uh, technical queries such as um, firewall issues and how to connect your system to the uh, gatekeeper, um, connectivity issues, um, if your um, if your system has failed QA test and it's unclear why exactly that happened. They can help with that, whether it's a video or an audio, audio um, setup which has um, which has failed. They can provide extra testing with that so that it it gets um, into a workable state. We have um, there are two desktop uh, systems that are used. Um, by Janet customers, and one the um, this is the originally this was the desktop client, and it's a conference me. It was it's provided by um, Cisco, and has been in use for a number of years. Um, one of the problems with that, I suppose, with it having been been in use for a number of years, is that um, the Cisco doesn't um, do, do any any new updates to it. So that um, it's unclear whether um, 
you know, what its future is. So I have been told recently that, let's see, I had a note written down. Um, Janet is in discussions with um, Cisco um, to see if they can provide some kind of a replacement for Conference Me. And um, Conference Me can be used um, on the Windows system only, but not on a, on a Mac. So it would be nice, really, if, if Cisco would provide us with a, um, a desktop system that was Mac and, and PC friendly and um, you know, to be sort of a more all-around solution. Um, the desktop system, anyway, as it currently is, and it is in use and is quite popular too. It um, has desktop sharing capability so that people can share um, files or, or screenshots or whatever as they chat in a meeting. And we've got, there's a download um, of the software available at this link and a self-test system as well so that you can try it out. The page looks like this when you click on it. So it tells you that you need to have the working camera and the headset, um, tells you to how to download it and install the software and then you can start the test. Uh, that's provided on our, on our website. Um, the second desktop system is called VisiMate. Uh, this one is a Janet connected service, which means it sits on the Janet network and the server is on the Janet network and so that there's the security of knowing that your data isn't going halfway around the world and back. It's um, secure and reliable on, on Janet's own network. Um, this is a collaboration client and it allows you to have things like um, a chat tool, um, a moderator and it allows desktop sharing and um, picture sharing, and it does that in a way that um, gives, it gives a really good, um, good quality picture, so that it's very easy to see what um, you know what an image looks like. Um, it doesn't do it in a blurry way or anything. It's just quite clear. Uh, it's, win it's available for Windows and Mac, and also available on um, Android systems. Um, a free trial download is available at the link here. Uh, I've got the links given at the end, so if anybody's interested, they'll be able to try that. Um, the VisiMate system is able to link in directly to the Janet system um, and also is able to link in with any other traditional video conferencing systems. Um, some of the features of VisiMate is a presence, so you can instantly see which people, you know, who are your friends and who's available. Um, you've got the instant messaging that I mentioned. Uh, you can do audio or video um, or both, and you can have multi multiple participants. It connects in via SIP or H323, and um, the video, video skills um, to a high resolution, and that's quite useful for people um, who want a, you know, want a good um, quality image, such as, I suppose, uh, scientists, maybe doctors, people who are seeing um, x-rays and things like that, or medical data, it's easy to see, but I mean, it's not exclusively for them, it's for anybody who likes to see a picture that's a good quality. Uh, it's good file sharing, um, the moderator I'd mentioned. Um, in most cases, the free basic license is all that will be needed. Um, only the users who want to initiate uh, multiple participant, multiple um, VisiMate users in, in their conference, only those ones will, will be the ones who need to pay need to pay a license. And the cost of the license for a room system is um, fifteen pounds per month. In most cases, as I said, the, the license um, is free and people can join room systems and um, join one-to-ones with other VisiMate users at no cost. I just wanted to give you then some of the uses of Janet video conferencing in the further education sector. And one of the um, colleges that has been a real big user of video conferencing is um, in North Wales, is Clandidrillo Menai. I hope I've said that correctly. Um, 
this is uh, made up of uh, three separate colleges. There's um, uh, Dwight Four and Menai and Clandrillo, and they were um, located at, at some distance apart. And uh, more recently, then the colleges have merged. Uh, video conferencing has played a huge part in the merging of the colleges. colleges. Um, it's been used for all the admin and uh, business meetings and all kinds of um, uh, chats and, you know, it's just, just avoided lots of travel. Um, it's also used for broadcasting lectures to colleges within the network, um, it's used for distance learning, distance working, and um, it supports, the college supports 2,000 staff and 34,000 students. And I've been told that the college wouldn't dream of, of operating at all without a video conferencing system. It's just uh, central to everything that they do. Uh, lots of classes or uh, lots of um, uh, study options are available that wouldn't have been considered, you know, they couldn't have offered them at all without video conferencing. Um, the make up something like 65% of this college alone makes up something like 65% of, of Janet's video conferencing usage. It plays such a big part in their lives. Um, Wilshire College then, that's another multi-campus college. It's got uh, Chippenham to the north and Salisbury to the south of the county and it's got a few campuses then around in between those as well. And that's used the video conferencing mainly for internal meetings and occasionally they have external meetings with other organizations. It represents a big re um, reduction in travel for them. Um, the, uh, one of the things they used video conferencing for was to, talk, um, was to deliver a talk from the New Zealand engineer and uh, entrepreneur so that they could hear his views on about things. And also they use video conferencing for to deliver staff development in new ways. And they have used it to link up with um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics employers in the county. So there we are. OK, I've mentioned Janet as a um, um, Janet support group um, based at Edinburgh and the two video conferencing desktop systems which are the um, uh, VisiMeet and Janet's desktop system which is ConferenceMe and I've also mentioned some of the uses for a couple of the colleges in the fur further education sector and um, that's probably it from me really. Has anybody got any questions? If you've got any questions, just um, type them into the, the, the chat pane and then we'll respond to them. So um, I'll move forward with the slides, but you know, uh, please do type your question and we, and we will answer it as best as we can. Um, a, a couple of points I really do want to pick out on that is that you know, um, the, the multi-campus uh, colleges um, and organizations, and we could be including work-based learning sector here, um, the, the work-based learning provider I was in the other day, they had about 10 different sites they were actually working from, um, and also their assessors were scattered across the country as well, and they found um, the system they were using was Skype, but it could be any sort of video conferencing system. Um, they yeah. just found it invaluable. It was the only way to work, um, you know, effectively and to share information um, and, and share resources. The um, the other things I would sort of say is that, yeah, we, we're pretty good, I would say, for using it in the sort of office type environment for conferencing and so on, but we need to get it much more into the classroom. Um, and you know we could get conference in. There are a number of um, FE colleges that do have GD, uh, sorry, Janet video conferencing facilities, um, so they are connected. Um, so that you know there's no reason why it, it couldn't be used in some way. And in the way to actually get experts from um, the, the UK, from um, international sort of markets, get them in, make the sessions um, viable, make them interesting, interactive. 
Um, so, you know, so it just takes a bit of time to sort of organize um, and a bit of imagination as to what you can do. Um, I do know, I talk to the, um, the heads of IT uh, a lot. And um, I know that the systems are in place, or they're certainly getting in place um, in your organisations. Um, so you know th there should be no reasons why you shouldn't be able to sort of um, filtrate into the into the teaching environment as well. So um, so you know it, it's an important area for us to sort of move, move into, particularly with things like BYOD as well, bring your own device. So. Um, lots of things. So, thank you very much, Phyllis. That was terrific. Uh, a very good insight. Um, you know, the if you do want to discuss any sort of options available for you on video conferencing or in streaming, then you can either contact myself at the RSC in the East Midlands, or or Phyllis at um, uh, Janet, um, or, and the rest of her team, um, and they can provide advice on hardware, software, room configurations, and and so on. Um, there are, if you, I know there's a number of people uh, joining us from across the UK today. You have regional sports centres um, across the UK. Um, do get in touch with your local one. Uh, we'll pass on your details um, to those so they can make contact with you um, and, you know, hopefully move you forward as far as um, conferencing or streaming is concerned. Um, a couple of uh, other things coming up this um, this next week or two. Um, a couple more webinars. You might be interested in one later this afternoon um, at two o'clock. Insight into planning your curriculum, uh, and then um, tomorrow there's one that might be of interest to you on using digital media. Um, the booking is there. Uh, the booking link is there. Steve just put the link into the um, into the chat pane. We still have got time. Um, to take bookings if you wish. Um, there's face-to-face -face workshops uh, next week in Leicester uh, and in Nottingham on those two days, so we'll be pleased to see you there. There are different sessions, or some are different sessions certainly to what we're delivering um, today, so uh, and over the next couple of days by, uh, by webinar. Um, so all the uh, resources from the session today and all the other sessions will be um, put in together will be on the uh, Moodle platform um, and the web address is there. It will be constantly updated over the next couple of weeks. Um, so you know, hopefully that's given you a good insight as to you know, what's available um, on the market and the potential um, you know, for, for engaging with video in, in a much better way. Once again, I'd just like to thank Phyllis for joining us. It's very much appreciated. Um, and um, we'll certainly keep in touch to uh, move things forward um, you know, for, our, for our providers in, in our region. So, so thank you for this. Um, any more questions? Um, there's no many questions coming through on the chat, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for your time. Um, hope you found it useful. I can see that some feedback is coming back that said it was, so that's nice. Thank you for that. Um, it just leaves you now to sort of sign out from the session. Um, and you can just do that by file and um, exit, I believe, if you're on a, a Windows type machine. So um, thank you, and I hope to see you over the next uh, week or so on some more sessions. Thank you. <laughs>